Hi everyone, welcome to Wire and Wiki. Today we're going to be making a woven wire wrapped tumbled stone keychain while we talk about cultural depictions of cats from a Wikipedia article. This is the premiere episode of Wire and Wiki, so I hope everyone can be a little patient with me as I learn how to do things and learn how to talk. And and deal with ambient noises like that. Just want to give you a little overview of what my channel is going to be about. The, the videos I'm, aren't going to have any descriptions. It's just going to be me reading and talking about a Wikipedia article. This particular one is the cultural depiction of cats, like I said. I'm hoping that my videos are going to be clear enough that people can watch them and understand how I'm going about making things. Um, you're going to see my hands in the videos, and there's scratches on my hands from my cats. I have a lot of cats. That's why we're starting out with cultural depictions of cats. The, the cats are fine. I'm fine. We like to play, and I get scratches on my hands. They're fine. They'll heal up. Don't worry. I also have vitiligo, which means your skin loses its pigment. And I've lost all the pigment in all of my fingers, so my fingers are ghostly white, but the backs of my hands are just a hair darker, and in the summer, they'll, they'll get a little darker, and it'll be a little more obvious what I'm talking about. I should probably read an article on vitiligo. That would be well, interesting for me. If anybody has any suggestions about any you know, Wikipedia articles, weird, or history, or any kind of animal, or whatever, just you leave it in the comments, and I will read all the comments. I tend to talk really fast, but I'm going to try and read these articles a little slower to make it a little easier for me to understand what the article's about, and for you to understand what the article's about, and for you to be able to watch the screen and try and understand what's going on there, and maybe learn a little something from Wikipedia. Like I said, this is my very first video, so please try and be patient with me and hang in there. And stick around and watch some more videos on my channel, because they'll only get better from here on out. Okay, but go gather your tumbled stones, gather your 20 gauge wire and your 26 gauge wire, then bring along an interest for the cultural depiction of cats. Now let's get started. The cultural depiction of cats and their relationship to humans is old and stretches back over 9,500 years. Cats are featured in the history of many nations, are the subject of legend, and are a favorite subject of artists and writers the earliest history. It is thought that cats were originally domesticated because they hunted mice that would eat stored grains. But a recent study found that cats, are dom cats domesticated themselves. They were never specifically sought out for domestication like dogs were, but their coexistence with humans naturally developed from the, from the mutually beneficial nature of the relationship, with their hunting protecting the food store. It was a beneficial situation for both species. Cats got a reliable source of prey, and humans got effortless pest control. This mutually beneficial arrangement began the relationship between cats and humans, which continues to this day. While the exact history of humans' interactions with cats is still somewhat vague, a shallow gravesite discovered in 1983 in Cyprus, dating to 7,500 BCE, during the Neolithic period, contains the skeleton of a human buried ceremonially with stone tools, a lump of iron oxide, and a handful of seashells. In its own tiny grave, 40 centimeters, 18 inches, from the human grave was an eight-month-old cat, its body oriented in the same westward direction as the human skeleton. Cats are not native to Cyprus. This is evidence that cats were being tamed just as humankind was establishing the first settlements in the part of the Middle East known as the Fertile Crescent. The lineage of today's cats stems from about 4,500 BC and came from Europe and Southeast Asia, according to a recent study. Modern cats stem from two major lines of lineage. Moving to Africa and ancient Egypt, cats known in ancient Egypt as the Mao played a large role in ancient Egyptian society. They were associated with the goddess Isis and Bastet. Cats were sacred animals, and the goddess Bastet was often depicted in cat form, sometimes taking on the warlike aspect of a lioness. Killing a cat was absolutely forbidden. The Greek historian Herodotus reports that 
Whenever a household cat died, the entire family would mourn and shave their eyebrows. Families took their dead cats to the sacred city of Bubastis, where they were embalmed and buried in sacred repositories. In Europe, the Kingdom of Cats was a legendary Pictish kingdom during the early Middle Ages, centered in what is now Katniss in northern Scotland. The place named Katniss derives from Cat, which is also preserved in the Gaelic name for Sutherland, Catab. In several specific names within the county, and in the earliest recorded name for Shetland, in say Cat, meaning the island of the cat people. In Norse mythology, the goddess Freya was associated with cats. Farmers sought protection for their crops by leaving pans of milk in their fields for Freya's special feline companions, the two gray cats who fought with her and pulled her chariot. Folklore dating back as early as 1607 tells that a cat will suffocate a newborn infant by putting its nose to the child's mouth, sucking the breath out of the infant. Black cats are generally held to be unlucky in the United States and Western Europe to pretend good luck in the United Kingdom. In the latter country, a black cat entering a house or ship is a good omen, and a sailor's wife should have a black cat for her husband's safety on the sea. Elsewhere, it is considered unlucky if a black cat crosses one's path. Black cats have been associated with death and darkness. White cats, bearing the color of ghosts, are conversely held to be unlucky in the United Kingdom, while tortoise shell cats are lucky. It is common lore that cats have nine lives. It is a tribute to their perceived durability, their occasional apparent lack of instinct or self-preservation, and their seeming ability to survive falls that would be fatal to other animals. Cats were seen as good luck charms by actors, and the cats often helped cure the actors' stage fright. Ancient Greece and Rome. Domestic cats were probably first introduced to Greece and southern Italy in the 5th century BC by the Phoenicians. The earliest unmistakable evidence of Greeks, ha Greeks having domestic cats comes from two coins from Magna Graecia, dating to the mid 5th century BC, showing Lacostos and Philanthos, the legendary founders of Region and Taras, respectively, playing with their pet cats. House cats seem to have been extremely rare among the ancient Greeks and Romans. The Greek historian Herodotus expressed astonishment at the domestic cats in Egypt, because he had only ever seen wild cats. Even during later times, weasels were far more commonly kept as pets, and weasels, not cats, were seen as the ideal rodent killers. The usual ancient Greek word for cat was aloros, meaning thing with the waving tail, but this would also be applied to any of the other various long-tailed carnivores kept for catching mice. Cats are rarely mentioned in ancient Greek literature, but Aristotle does remark in his History of Animals that female cats are naturally lecherous. In Greek essayist Plutarch linked cats with cleanliness, noting that the unnatural noting that unnatural odors could make them mad. Pliny linked them with lust, and Aesop with deviousness and cunning. The Greeks later synchronized their own goddess Artemis with the Egyptian goddess Bastet, adopting Bastet's association with cats and ascribing them to Artemis. In Ovid's Metamorphoses, when the gods flee to Egypt and take animal forms, the goddess Diana, the Roman equivalent of Artemis, turns into a cat. Cats eventually displace ferrets as their pest control of choice because they were more pleasant to have around the house and they were more enthusiastic hunters of mice. Cats in the Middle Ages. During the Middle Ages, many of Artemis' associations with cats were grafted onto the Virgin Mary. Cats are often shown in icons of Annunciation and of the Holy Family. And according to Italian folklore, on the same night that Mary gave birth to Jesus, a cat in Bethlehem gave birth to a kitten. Viking used cats as rat catchers and companions. An old Irish poem about an author who was a monk and his cat, Pangor Ban, was found in a 9th century manuscript. Panger Ban, meaning White Panger, is the cat's name. In eight verses of four lines each, the author compares the cat's happy hunting with his own scholarly pursuits. I and Panger Ban my cat, tis a light task we are at. Hunting mice is his delight, hunting words I sit all night. A medieval king of Wales, Hywel Da, passed a legislation making it illegal to kill or harm a cat. In medieval Ypres, 
cats were used in the winter months to control the vermin infesting the wool stored in the upper floors of the cloth hall, known as Laken Hall. At the start of the spring warm-up, after the wool had been sold, the cats were thrown out of the belfry tower to the town square below, which supposedly symbolized the killing of evil academics. In today's cat and stoat, the cat parade, this was commuted to the throwing of woolen cats from the top of houses, and also people from the Middle Ages often used to suck the wool as a sign of good luck. Renaissance and Victorian depictions. In the Renaissance, cats were often thought to be witches' familiars in England. For example, Grey Malkin, the first witch's familiar in Macbeth's famous opening scene, and during the festivities were sometimes burnt alive or thrown off buildings. Cats became popular in sympathetic characters and folk tales such as Puss in Boots. One English folk tale, in which a cat is given the role of a friend who was betrayed as Dick Whittington and his cat, which has been adapted for many stage works, including plays, musical comedies, and pantomimes. It tells of a poor boy in the 14th century, based on the real-life Richard Whittington, who becomes a wealthy merchant and eventually the Lord Mayor of London because of the ratting abilities of his cat. There is no historical evidence that Whittington had a cat. In the tale, Dick Whittington, a poor orphan, finds work at a great house of Mr. Fitzwarren, a rich merchant, who has a little room infested with rats. Dick acquires a cat who drives off the rats. One day, Mr. Fitzwarren asks his servants if they wish to send something in his ship, leaving on a journey to a far-off port to trade for gold. Dick decided to sell his only close friend, his cat. In the far-off court, Dick's cat had become a hero by driving very troublesome vermin from the royal court. When Fitzwarren's ship returned, it was loaded with riches. Dick was a rich man. He joined Mr. Fitzwarren in his business and married his daughter Alice, and in time became the Lord Mayor of London. This story reflects the mentality of Western man in society in the capitalist era, reflecting Dick Whittington as a possible positive character. In Russia, unlike Western countries, cats have been considered good luck in Russia for centuries. Owning a cat, and especially letting one into a new house before the humans move in, is said to bring good fortune. Cats in Orthodox Christianity are the only animals that are allowed to enter the temples. Also, cats, an integral attribute of Russian Orthodox monasteries, according to Russian law, a huge fine was imposed for killing a cat, the same as for a horse or ox. Many cats have guarded the Hermitage Museum in Winter Palace continually since Empress Elizabeth's reign, when she was presented by the city of Kazan and Tatarstan five of their best mousers to control the palace's rodent problem. They lived pampered lives and even had special servants until the October Revolution, after which they were cared for by volunteers. Now they are again looked after by employees. In modern-day Russia, there is a group of cats at the Hermitage in St. Petersburg. They have their own press secretary, with about 74 cats of both genders roaming the museum. Moving on to Asia, in China, Cats that were favorited pets during the Chinese Song Dynasty were long-haired cats for catching rats, and cats with yellow and white fur called lion cats, who were valued simply as cute pets. Cats could be pampered with items bought from the market, such as cat nests, and were often fed fish that were advertised in the market especially for cats. Japan In Japanese folklore, cats are often depicted as supernatural entities, or kabayu which means strange cat. The, Maniko, the Maneki Niko of Japan is a figurine often believed to bring good luck to the owner, literally the beckoning cat. It is often referred to in English as a good fortune or good luck cat. It is usually a sitting cat with one of its paws raised and bent, its, its left paw. Legend in Japan has it that the cat waved a paw at a Japanese landlord who was intrigued by the gesture and went towards it. A few seconds later, a lightning bolt struck where the landlord had been previously standing. The landlord attributed his good fortune to the cat's fortuitous action, a symbol of good luck hence. It is most often seen in businesses to draw in money. In Japan, the flapping of the hand is a come-here gesture so the cat is beckoning customers. 
There is also a small cat shrine, Nico Jinja, built in the middle of Tishohiro Jima Island. In the past, the islander raised silkworms from silk, and cats were kept in order to keep the mouse population down, because mice are natural predators of silkworms. Fixed net fishing was popular on the island after the Edo period, and fishermen from other areas would come and stay on the island overnight. The cats would go to the inns where the fishermen were staying and beg for scraps. Over time, the fishermen developed a fondness for the cats and would observe the cats closely, interpreting their actions as predictions of the weather and fish patterns. One day when the fishermen were collecting rocks to use with their fixed nets, a stray rock fell and killed one of the cats. The fishermen, feeling sorry for the loss of the cat, buried it and enshrined it at this location on the island. This is not the only cat shrine in Japan, however. Others include Nambujinja in the Niigata Prefecture and one at the entrance of Kayatango City in Kyoto. Another Japanese legend of cats is the Nikomata. When a cat lives to a certain age, it grows another tail and can stand up and speak in a human language. Hello Kitty, created by Yugo Yamaguchi, is a contemporary cat icon. The character made its debut in 1974 and has since become a global staple of Japanese culture. The merchandise is available all over the world, according to Senryo, the official licensor, designer, and producer of Hello Kitty merchandise. The character is a cartoon version of a little girl. In her fictional life, she is from the outskirts of London and part of the Senryo universe. In Islam, although no species are sacred in Islam, Cats are revered by Muslims. Some Western writers have stated Muhammad had a favorite cat, Moiza. He is reported to have loved cats so much that he would do without his cloak rather than disturb one of that was sleeping on it. In modern culture, cats have also featured prominently in modern culture. For example, a cat named Nimsy was used by the MTM Enterprises as their mascot and features in their logo as a spoof of the MGM lion. By 1990, the New York Times said that cats had become the most popular subject depicted on gift items, such as coasters, napkins, jewelry, bookends, and that an estimated 1,000 stores in the United States sold nothing but cat-related items. On the internet, cats frequently appear, often as memes and other humor, and on social media, people frequently post pictures of their own cats. And here's a list of other a legend states that when Jesus Christ was born, he would not stop crying no matter what anyone did, and what finally calmed him was when a tabby cat jumped into the manger and purred, lulling him to sleep. The Virgin Mary petted the cat in gratitude, and the M on the forehead of the tabby cat is for her name. In Celtic mythology, a cat she is a fairy cat. Sith or Seed both pronounce she, meaning fairy. In Catholicism, the patron saint of cats is Saint Gertrude of Nivelles. The cat duet, Dueto Bufu di Ducati, attributed to Rossini, is a popular performance piece for two sopranos, whose lyrics consist entirely of the repeated word meow. That's the end of that article, and we're not quite done making our beautiful and uh, very durable tumblestone keychain, so we're going to follow a link out of that article and move on to cats and the internet. Alright, cats and the internet. Images and videos of domestic cats make up some of the most viewed content on the web, particularly image macros in the form of wall cats. Thought Catalog has described cats as the unofficial mascot of the internet. The subject has attracted the attention of various scholars and critics who have analyzed why this form of low art has reached iconic status. Although it may be considered frivolous, cat-related internet content contributes to how people interact with media and culture. Some argue that there is a depth and complexity to this seemingly simple content, with a suggestion that the positive psychological effects that pets have on their owners also holds true for cat images viewed online. Research has suggested that viewing online cat media is related to positive emotions, and that it even may work as a form of digital therapy or stress relief for some users. Some elements of research also shows that feelings of guilt when postponing tasks can be reduced by viewing cat content. 
Some individual cats, such as Grumpy Cat and Little Bub, have achieved popularity online because of their unusual appearances and funny cat videos. The history. Humans have always had a close relationship with cats, and the animals have long been subject of short films, including the early, early silent movie Boxing Cats in 1894 and The Sick Kitten in 1903. Harry Pointer from 1822 to 1889 has been cited as the progenitor of the shameless cat picture. Cats have been shared via email since the Internet's rise to prominence in the 1990s. The first cat video on YouTube was uploaded in 2005 by YouTube co-founder Steve Chen, who posted a video of his cat called Pajamas and Nick Drake. The following year, Puppy vs. Cat became the first viral cat video uploaded by a user called Sanchi, aka Michael Weinzik. As of 2015, it had over 16 million views on YouTube. In a Mashable article that explored the history of cat media on the internet, the oldest entry was an ASCII art cat that originally originated on two channel and was a pictorial representation of the phrase please go away. The oldest continuously operating cat website is Sophie.net which launched in October of 1999 and is still operating. The New York Times describes cat images as that essential building block of the internet. In addition, 2,594,329 cat images had been manually annotated on Flickr.com by users. An interesting phenomenon is that many photograph owners tag their house cats as tiger. Eric Nakagawa and Kari Unabasami started a website, I Can Has Cheeseburger, in 2007 where they shared funny pictures of cats. The site allowed users to create law cat memes by placing writing on top of pictures of their cats. The site has more than 100 million views per month and has created a whole new form of internet speak. In 2009, the humor site, Burlesque, deemed September 9th a day without cats online and had over 40 blogs and websites agree to ban cats from their pages for at least 24 hours. As of 2015, there were over 2 million cat videos on YouTube alone and cats are one of the most searched keywords on the internet. CNN estimated that in 2015, there could be around 6.5 billion cat pictures on the Internet. The Internet has been described as a virtual cat park, a social space for cat lovers in the same way that dog lovers congregate at a dog park. The Daily Telegraph deemed Nyan Cat the most popular Internet cat, while NPR gave this title to Grumpy Cat. The Daily Telegraph also deemed the best cat video on YouTube as Surprise Kitty, which currently has over 75 million views. BuzzFeed deemed Catty Cake the most important cat of 2010. In 2015, an exhibition called How Cats Took Over the Internet opened at the Museum of the Mo Moving Image in New York. The exhibition looks at the history of how they rose to the internet fame and why people like them so much. There is even a book entitled How to Make Your Cat an Internet Celebrity, A Guide to Financial Freedom. The annual Internet Cat Video Festival celebrated and awards the Golden Kitty to cat videos. According to the Star Tribune, the festival's success is because people realized that the cat video that they chuckled over in the privacy of their homes was suddenly a thousand times funnier when there are thousands of people around. The Daily Telegraph had an entire article devoted to International Cat Day. EMGN wrote an article entitled 21 Reasons Why Cats in the Internet Are a Match Made in Heaven. In 2015, there were more than 2 million cat videos on YouTube, with an average of 12,000 views each, a higher average than any other category of YouTube content. Cats made up 16% of views on YouTube's Pets and Animals category, compared to dogs 23%. The YouTube video Cats vs. Zombies merged the two internet phenomenon of cats and zombies. Data from BuzzFeed and Tumblr has shown that dog videos have more views than those of cats and less than 1% of posts on Reddit mention cats. While dogs are searched for much more than cats, there is less content on the internet. The Facebook page, Cats, has over 2 million likes while dogs has over 6.5 million. In an internet tradition, the New York Times Archives Twitter account posts, posts cat reporting 
throughout the history of New York Times. The Japanese prefecture of Hiroshima launched an online Cat Street View, which showed the region from the perspective of a cat. Abigail Tucker, the author of The Lion in the Living Room, A History of Domestic Cats, has suggested that cats appeal particularly because they remind us of our own faces, and especially of our babies. They're strikingly human, but also perpetually deadpan. Psychology Jason Epinick, curator of the Museum of the Move, Moving Images show How Cats Took Over the Internet, has noted the outsized role of cats on the internet. Wired Magazine felt that the cuteness of cats was too simplistic an explanation for their popularity online. A scientific survey done found that participants were more happy after watching cat videos. The researcher behind the survey explained, if we want to better understand the effects that the internet may have on us as individuals and on a society, then researchers can't ignore internet cats anymore, and consumption of online cat-related media deserves empirical attention. The Huffington Post suggests that the videos were a form of procrastination, with most being watched while at work or ostensibly studying. While IU Bloomington commented, it does more than simply entertain. It boosts viewers' energy and positive emotions and decreases negative feelings. Business Insider argues, this falls in line with a body of research regarding the effects of animals have on people. A 2015 study by Jessica, Jessica Gall-Merrick found that people were more than twice as likely to post a picture or a video of a cat to the internet than they were to post a selfie. Maria Bustillos considers cat videos to be the crystallization of all human beings' love about cats. With their natural beauty and majesty being just one tiny slip away from total humiliation, which Bustillos sees as a mirror of the human condition. When the creator of the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee, was asked for an example of a popular use for the internet that you would never have predicted, he answered, kittens. A 2014 paper argues that cats' unselfconsciousness is rare in the age of hyper-surveillance, and cat photos appeal to people as it lets them imagine the possibility of freedom from surveillance while presenting the power of controlling that surveillance as unproblematic. Time magazine felt that the cat images tap into viewers' nature as, they, as secret voyeurs. The Cheeseburger Network considers cats to be the perfect canvas for human emotion, as they have expressive facial and body aspects. Mashable offered, cats cuteness, non-cuteness, popularity among geeks, blank canvas qualities, personality issues, and the fact that dogs just don't have it, as possible explanation to cats' popularity on the internet. A paper entitled, I Can Has Emotions, Understanding Anthropomorphosis of Cats Among Internet Users found that Tagpuss, an app that showed users cat images and asked them to choose their emotions, can be used to identify cat behaviors that lay people find difficult to distinguish. Jason Empick, curator of How Cats Took Over the Internet exhibition, explained, People on the web are more likely to post a cat than any other animal because it sort of perpetuates itself. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Jason Kotke, considered cats to be easier to objectify, and therefore easier to make fun of. Journalist Jack Shepard suggested that cats were more popular than dogs because dogs were trying too hard. And humorous behavior in a dog would be seen as a bid for validation. Shepard sees cat behavior as being cool and effortless and devoid of any concern about what you might think about it. It's art for art's sake. Cats have historically been associated with magic and have been revered by various human cultures. The ancient Egyptians, worshipping them as gods, the creatures being feared as demons in ancient Japan, such as the Bekaniko. Vogue magazine has suggested that the popularity of cats on the internet is culturally specific, being popular in North America, Western Europe, and Japan. Other nations favor different animals online. Ugandan sharing images of goats and chickens Mexicans preferring llamas, and Chinese internet users sharing images of the river crab and grass mud horse, due to double meanings of their names allowing them to subvert government internet censors.
Cute Cat Theory of Digital Activism The Cute Cat Theory of Digital Activism is a theory concerning internet activism, internet censorship, and cute cats. Cute cats is a term used for any low-value but popular online activity. Developed by Ethan Zuckerman in 2008, it posits that most people are not interested in activism. Instead, they want to use the web for mundane activities, including surfing for pornography or lol cats. The tools that they develop for that, such as Facebook, Flickr, Blogger, Twitter, and similar platforms, are very useful to social movement activists who may lack resources to develop dedicated tools themselves. This, in turn, makes the activists more immune to reprisals by governments than if they were using a dedicated activism platform. Because shutting down a popular public platform provokes a larger public outcry than shutting down an obscure one. We've come to the end of the article, everyone. At the bottom, there's a list of celebrity cats. Ruffy Cat, Little Bub, Maru, Colonel Meow, Oscar and Klaus, O Long Johnson, Venus the Two-Faced Cat, Hamilton the Hipster Cat, Grandpa Mason, and Jorts. If you want to check out the uh, Wikipedia site, all the links will be underneath the video. If you want to check out all the um, written tutorials I have, the link will be under the video. If you want to check out any finished pieces I have, the link will be under the video. And thank you for hanging in there with me. And I'll see you next time.